Welcome back to Totality Town, North Carolina. In this episode, we're going to discuss eclipse blindness, as well as several methods for safely viewing total solar eclipses. The purpose of this video is to underscore the importance of safe solar viewing. There's a lot of good information out there, but there's also some bad information coming from people who really should know better. The light coming off of the sun is the same during an eclipse as it is any other time. But our behavior is different than any other day. We all know that we're not supposed to stare at the sun. And yet when a solar eclipse occurs, that is exactly what we all want to do. And that's okay, as long as you do it with the right technique. It's like skydiving. It's safe as long as you have the right equipment, it's in good shape, and you use good techniques. Now, it almost always happens that I'll end up talking to someone who saw an eclipse back in the 60s, or who's just some wannabe tough guy, and you'll say, I remember looking at the total solar eclipse. Everyone said it wasn't safe to look out without some sort of protection, but I did, and I felt fine. I didn't feel a thing. Dude, that's because the retina does not have pain receptors. This guy is literally frying his eyeball, but there's no pain signal telling him to stop. Please don't be one of those people. Eclipse blindness is a sneaky thing. Only look directly at the sun without protection during totality. Even if the sun is still 99% eclipsed, it's the intensity that kills you. It's still dangerous. That 1% of the sun sticking out just means that the sun is burning a smaller part of your eye instead of a larger part. The other thing that makes the sun's disk damaging to look at is the infrared radiation. The sun gives off a lot of infrared radiation. So the tissues in your eyes are literally being cooked when you look at the sun unprotected. Usually, the discomfort that comes with this eclipse blindness does not begin until several hours after the eclipse. The story is a little bit different for kids, and I don't mean to scare you, just want to be honest. Ultraviolet light gradually hardens the eyes over the course of time. So adults were not as sensitive to UV. Children, however, are very sensitive. And of course, children and young adults are the ones who are most likely to not be careful. So parents, you need to walk a fine line of being careful and yet not spoiling the whole day. The natural question becomes, what kind of damage can occur? And that depends on a lot of things. How long were you looking? Were your eyes moving or was the sun always staying on the same spot of your eye? Usually, it's the central part of your vision that will be damaged while the edges of your vision are relatively fine. But the bottom line is that the damage can be temporary or it can be permanent. And ultimately, the only way to know is to wait and see how or if your eyes heal. Personally, I'd much rather just watch the eclipse safely the first time. Longtime optometrist and eclipse chaser Ralph Chu is probably the world's leading expert on eye safety during total solar eclipses. In the text description for this episode, you'll find the link to an article he wrote on this subject for NASA back in 1997, as well as a 2017 article which features him, and I highly recommend you read both of these resources. So, now that I've scared you, hopefully I've not scared you away from wanting to see the eclipse at all, but it is important to be safe. And so the big question is, how do you view a solar eclipse safely? There are actually a number of ways, but they fall into three basic categories. Direct viewing, projection methods, and using telescopes. Direct viewing is when you are facing the sun and looking straight at it, but never, ever, ever do this with the naked eye. You need to use either eclipse glasses or a piece of number 14 welder's glass. And these are the only safe methods for direct viewing. Projection viewing is simple, but there are a lot of different ways, and it's more than I can show you in just this video. You can attend one of the free projection workshops that we'll have in Totality Town in the days and weeks before the eclipse. That schedule is available on the Totality Town website. Another option is to take the online course I designed and produced on how to view a total solar eclipse. If you want to be prepared ahead of time, this is the best course available to you. Clicking on this card 
will take you to the course and give you a deep discount on it because there's a coupon built in. You'll also find that link again in the text description below the article links. And when it comes to telescopic viewing, we'll also have a number of telescopes set up at Heritage Park and some telescope education sessions on Saturday and Sunday before the eclipse. Again, see the website for details. All told, we will have more ways to safely observe this eclipse than anywhere else in the region. Our goal is for you to protect your eyes while thoroughly enjoying this eclipse. We hope that these tips will be helpful to you whether you come and join us in Totality Town or enjoy the eclipse elsewhere. For more information on events and coming to Totality Town for the eclipse, please go to our webpage, wncsolareclipse.com, look us up on Facebook at WNC Solar Eclipse 2017, or subscribe to the Totality Town YouTube channel. We hope you'll consider joining us on August 21st.